So in this video, we will go through the derivation of the expected value and the variance of the sampling distribution of a sample mean. So what does that mean? Let's say we have an original, we have a random variable, we we'll call that x. And that x is normally distributed as a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. So the expected value, if you draw any particular value from that distribution, has an expected value of mu and a variance of sigma squared. So what we now do is we're taking n, so we can think of 10, 20, 30 independent draws from that distribution. Now importantly, what does that mean, independent draws? That means that the covariance of draw i and draw j is equal to zero where i and j is not the same. Okay, so think about um, the first random number you draw, that would be x1. The second you draw is x2, and the outcome of x2 is independent of the outcome of x1. So every time you draw a random number. So the covariance is equal to zero. That will be important later. So what we calculate here is the sample mean. So we sum up all the values over n, all our n values, and then we divide by n. So in what follows, I will use the summation sign, but without the indices. Okay, but implied it's always that the index goes from i equals one to n. We are summing over all of our observations. So what you get here, in other words, is 1 over n times the outcome of the first random variable plus the outcome of the second random variable all the way to xn. So let's think about the expected value of that random variable x bar. So we're using random variables notation. So these are all capital letters. They're not particular outcomes. Think about these as random variables. So um, so it's important to understand x is a random variable. That means our first draw is a random variable. Our second draw is a random variable. Our third draw is a random variable. All of these are random variables. These are random variables. That means this guy x bar is also a random variable. And that's why we are interested in the expected value of that random variable. So we're having the expected value, now I'll just put in this formula here and I'll use it in that form to make it uh, hopefully a little bit more obvious what is happening. x2 all the way to xn. Now that n is a constant. This is our sample size. We know that we can draw constant factors outside of the expectations operator. So we get 1 over n times the expected value of x1 plus x2 all the way to xn. Now, we also know that the expected value of a sum is the same as the sum of the expected values. So we get 1 over n times the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 all the way through to the expected value of xn. Now each of these are independent draws from this random variable up here x. And what is the expected value if we get such a um, draw? Let, let me use red for that. Well the expected value for each of these draws is mu. So what we have here is 1 over n and times in brackets and let me just prepare that and I want to use red here the expected value for this is mu the expected value for this is mu again and so forth and the expected value of that is mu again so this guy here we're having n times so from now on so what we have here is n times mu 
and this n will cancel out so as a result we're having mu so the expected value and let me just say that here in the end what we calculate here was the expected value of x bar so the expected value of x bar is mu which is just exactly the same as our let me just do that in red in red then which is exactly the expected value of our original random variable so whether you only draw one number or whether you draw n and then calculate the average the expected value is always going to be mu so let's see what happens to the variance the variance of x bar x bar is a random variable so we can calculate a variance so what we're first going to do is we just very mechanically replace x bar with our formula here you could um, use the other formula here but i think it may be easier if we use this one here okay so what i now the way how i now want to deconstruct that is that we're going to write down that this is exactly the same as 1 over n times x1 plus 1 over n times x2 all the way to 1 over n x n so now is the trick and this is now very important we know that the variance in general the variance of a linear combination or a sum of terms is not so generally this will not be equal to the variance the sum of the variance of the individual terms 1 over n x1 plus the variance of 1 over n x2 plus da, 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 all the way to the variance of 1 over n x n so in general that is not equal because what you need is also to you need some covariance terms however and here is now the neat uh, the neat trick remember we are drawing independent random terms so the covariances will be zero that means these covariance terms will fall away and we can on this occasion because we are drawing independent random variables indeed say that the variance of this sum is the same as the sum of the variance so as independent draws okay so that is very important to understand that this step only works because all of these covariance terms fall away so now we can recognize we're having a variance times a constant factor here times the random variable remember it's just the yellow bits let me highlight that again these are the random terms 1 over n is just a constant factor and we know that when we calculate variances we can bring a constant factor outside of the variance but we need to square it so it's the whole squared of 1 over n squared because 1 squared is just 1 and we get the same here 1 over n squared times the variance of x2 all these terms plus 1 over n squared times the variance of xn so then we see we have this constant factor here 1 over n squared so let's just factor this out and we get 1 over n squared times the variance of x1 plus the variance of x2 plus all the way to the variance of xn and then of course well, perhaps not of course but now the next trick is to understand that the variance of each of these each of these here will be equal to 
sigma squared. So we get 1 over n squared times and then let me use the wonder of color again sigma squared sigma squared sigma squared and how many of these terms do we have we are having this term n times and with that we're almost done it's 1 over n squared and then we have n times sigma squared now we can one of these n's cancels out so we have sigma squared over n and what did we calculate we calculated this one so that is the variance of x bar so now recap we drew a sample of n independent numbers and calculated the sample average sorry the sample mean that is a random variable so we want to characterize it as we do with random variables we want to calculate the expected value and the variance and that's what we did here and we found that the expected value is just exactly the same as the expected value of our original random variable x the variance however is different the variance is sigma squared divided by n so you can see that this value here will decrease as the sample size increases.